today in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. My God, anybody want God to move on you today? Anybody want God to move in you today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I said anybody want God to touch you? Anybody want God to move in your life? Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory to God. I want you to know today there's a lot of things that people are chasing after today. There's a lot of things that people are running after today. You know what? They only find out that it was a dead end in their life. But I'm going to tell you what. The greatest thing you can be today is a God chaser today. The greatest thing you can be is to chase after God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm chasing after him today. I'm going to chase him with my word. I'm going to chase him with my prayer. I'm going to chase him with my love. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I was driving down the road and, uh, and all of a sudden a sign just came up dead in. Dead in. How many people have been disappointed in their lives with dead ends in their life? Things going nowhere. Things doing nothing. But I want you to know at the end of the dead end most of the time Time, there's a turnaround and I believe today if you feel like your life's at a dead end there's a turnaround today for you there's a place to turn around in this place today hallelujah hallelujah I thought my Lord if we hear any more out of North Little Rock not North China North uh, Korea and things they're doing they're saying that now they have a capability to do a mini bomb and attach it to one of these rockets and shoot it. You know, that ought to stir every heart in this place today. That ought to stir every heart because uh, they say that uh, America is not even mentioned in the book of Revelations. I, I don't know what happened to America, but I want you to know, hallelujah, I might not know what's going to happen to America, but I know what's going to happen to the church. I know what's going to happen to the church. The church is getting ready. The church is getting ready. While the world is getting ready for something else, I want to know today in in this place are you ready are you getting ready for the great time catching away of the church I want you to grab somebody's hand today and I want you as you grab their hand and you feel your, their hand in yours that person beside you could be lost that person beside you could be lost forever oh God that person beside you needs to turn around today that person today hallelujah needs to wake up that person today needs to shake hallelujah and right now as we begin to preach out to God I I want you to ask God to do a work today. I want you to ask God, turn us around today. Turn me around today. Come on. Turn us around in this place today. Come on. Don't end up on a dead end. Don't end up on a dead end. Come on. There's hope today. There's hope today. There's hope in this house today. As they begin to sing, I want you to go after God. Right there in your chair, right there in your pew. I want you to go after him. I want you to lift your hands. I want you to lift your head. I want you to lift your spirit. I want you to reach out to him. Come on today. As they begin to sing, they're leading us into worship. They're leading us into worship. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is the breath of God in you today? Is the breath of God in your life today? Is the breath of God in your life today? You got to ask yourself that question. Is the breath of God in you today? Hallelujah. I want you to know, I thought about old Noah. I thought about how he worked and how he built and how he worked and how he built. And I thought how people laughed at him and people mocked him and how people made fun of him and made fun of his family. But you know what? Hallelujah. At the end of the day, hallelujah, oh, Noah was the right one and the rest of them were the wrong ones. I'm going to tell you what, when that door, that ark closed and the rain came and it began to flood and the hallelujah, people began to run and scream and want to get in the ark and want it to be saved. I want you to know, friend, I don't want to be like the days of Noah. I don't want to wait around. I don't want to wait around. I want to get in. I want to get in, God. I want to get in God's word. I want to get in God's house. I want to get in God. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you what today. The door's open today, but I can't tell you it's going to be open tomorrow. I'm going to tell you today, listen, hallelujah. I don't want to find myself on the outside. I don't want to find myself on the outside. I don't want to find myself lost when it's all said and done. I'm telling somebody today, you need to get in this thing. I said you need to get in this thing. You need to get in before it's too late. You need to get in because, listen, the storm's coming. The storm's coming. I need his breath in my life. I need this praise on my lips. I need my head lifted up to look into him. Come on today, listen. I wouldn't leave this. I wouldn't leave this place today without going by that altar. I wouldn't leave this place today until I made a turnaround. I wouldn't leave this place until I got in. I wouldn't care. Come on, I'm gonna tell you what. I'm not gonna wait till the bombs fall. I'm not waiting till the bombs start. I'm not waiting. They say you got 30 minutes before something happens. I would tell you what. I'm gonna get ready today. I want to get ready today. Get ready today. Don't wait till the storm comes. Don't wait till the seconds click down. Come on, I feel God in this place. I feel God's reaching for somebody. I feel God's reaching for a soul. I feel God's pulling on a heart. I feel God's trying to identify and show you, hey, listen, it is getting late. It is a late time. You got to get in. Not only the ones that are on the outside, but those are the ones that are standing by the door. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you what. It's not enough to stand by the door. It's not enough to stand by the door and have one foot in the ark and one foot out on the outside. I'm telling you, there's a call today. There's a call today. There's a call today. Get in. In. Get in, get in, get in, get in, get in. I want you to lift your hands. Come on. I can see lightning on the horizon. I can hear the thunder from way off. The storm's coming, church. The storm's coming. All these years you've heard, this is a test of the national broadcast system. This is a test of the national broadcast system. If this had been an actual emergency, 
We have told you where to go and what to do. Listen, listen. I'm going to tell you it's fixing to happen. You better listen to me. You better listen to me in this place today. You better listen to me. It's, it's going to come across. And it said this is not a, this is not a test. I'm going to tell you what. I believe God's trying to get a hold of us. Come on. I believe God's trying to get us in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. As they begin to sing right now. Come on. I want you to you're in this place today maybe you need to repent right now maybe you need to start telling God you're sorry for some things maybe you need to tell God I'm sorry from hiding I'm sorry from running I'm sorry for ignoring you I'm sorry for goofing off I'm sorry for living for you sloppy I'm tired son I need you come on come on right now right now in this place today come on Maybe, maybe you ain't been what you need to go ahead and sing. Maybe you ain't been what you needed to be. Maybe you not been in God what you needed to be. Come on. Come on. Come on. You gotta go after God today. You gotta go after him. You gotta go after him. Come on. To worship you, I live. To worship you. won't you come on come on could you worship him come on
your hands. Come on, lift your hands all over the sanctuary. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you living to worship him? Are you living to worship him? Are you living for yourself? Are you living to worship him? Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, God's calling today. God's calling today. God's calling us today. I said, God's calling today. Oh, my God, my Lord. Oh, he's calling, he's calling. Turn around, turn around. Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Turn around. You're going the wrong way. Turn around. You're going the wrong direction. Turn around. Turn around. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Come on, turn around today. Don't go the wrong way. Don't go the wrong way. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. God's making a turnaround right now. God is making a turnaround for somebody in this building today. God is making a turnaround. Huh. Huh. Oh, my Lord, in your mighty name. Jesus. Jesus. God's calling. Will you hear him? Just close your eyes where you're at. You've been running a long time. But don't you think your running days are over? Don't you think your running days are need to come to an end? Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I'm going to turn that wheel today. I'm going to turn that wheel today. I'm going to turn around today. I'm going to turn around. See me, Lord. I'm turning. Here I come, Lord. I'm turning around. I'm turning around. I'm turning around today. No more what I want to do. It's God what you want to do. This is a test of the National Broadcast System. This is a test. Come on, come on, come on. I'd move out right now. I'd move out right now. I'd walk down here right now. I wouldn't wait. Come on. Come on. I feel that God's pulling. I feel God pulling. I feel God pulling. I feel God pulling. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Oh, the storm's coming, but I'm getting in. The storm's coming, but I'm getting in. I'm getting in today. I'm getting in. Oh, in the name of Jesus. To worship you, I 
be too late. Don't wait around too late. Hallelujah. His brother Ivy is getting ready to come today. With every hand and lifted up to the Lord right now. You see, God knows where every person in this building is at. God knows condition of every soul in this building. God knows every hold the enemy has on you. God knows every chain that the enemy's got on you. God knows. I'm telling you. This could be a day that would change your life. I can go back in my mind to the day that changed my life. When everything in my life was being shook and everything was being destroyed and wife dying and me suicidal. But I can go back to the point that I found a turnaround. And I cannot imagine in my life what would have happened if I had not responded to God and turned around. I would not have experienced the great things that God had prepared in my life. There are people in this building today that the enemy's cheating you out of things of God. There are people in this building today that the enemy has lied to you and deceived you. And he's used your own words against you. He's used your failures against you. But I see a turnaround. I see a big circle turn around if you will just turn. If you will just turn. I can't make that decision for anybody today. I can only make that decision for myself. Your wife, your husband, your friends cannot make that decision for you. Every person this by, in this place today must make their own decision. I remember the enemy telling me, don't, don't, don't pray. I remember the enemy telling me I was too bad. I'd done too much. But I saw a turnaround. I saw a turnaround. This time, I'm asking Brother Ivy to come to preach to us the word of the Lord. I appreciate Brother Ivy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless him.
Hallelujah. Come on, just love the Lord right now. Come on. Hallelujah. There's a special presence of God in this place reaching for heart and soul today in this house. But will you yield yourself to Him? Will you submit your will to God? It's when we crucify our flesh. It's when we get it out of the way that God can work. He can deal with us. He can change us. He can help us. But when we won't crucify our flesh and get it out of the way and surrender to God, He's limited. You limit God. Don't limit God today. Don't limit God today. Come on, just close your eyes one more time. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. To worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. To worship you. Paul said, or Peter said, on the day of Pentecost to save yourself. To save yourself from this untoward generation. If you haven't looked at the news, if you haven't looked at Hollywood, if you haven't looked at those things around you, this world's going to hell. It doesn't care about anybody but itself. And what I can gain. But the Bible says to gain the whole world and to lose your soul is nothing. To have it all and not have God living inside of you. Feeling that warm, loving presence of God nurturing and 
drawing you today. Save yourself. As much as I want to try to help you, I can't. It's up to you today. It's up to you to make your choice. Peter told him on the day of Pentecost, men and brethren, they asked him, men and brethren, what, what must we do to be saved? And he said to repent, to ask for forgiveness, to ask God to, to help me, to change God, to turn me from my wicked ways, to be baptized in Jesus' name, to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Have you done that today? It's your choice. God is calling somebody in this place. Come on. To turn around. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Come on, God's reaching for somebody in this place today. Come on. Will you yield to that still, small voice that's prompting you? Will you listen to that small voice that's prompting you to, to come unto me? Jesus, come on. Use you. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Jesus. 
worship him, to worship him, to love him, to serve him. Bible says in First Chronicles 16 and 29, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. In the beauty of holiness, to worship him. To worship God today. To worship means to, you can be seated. A feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity, the worship of God. There's a difference between worshiping God and praising God. Anybody can praise God. But not everybody worships God. Not everybody worships God. Not everybody reverences God. They know Him. They know of Him. But they don't worship God to reverence. Adoration. Glorification. To glory. To give Him glory. Exaltation. To give Him... Exalt him to the place that he is due. To show reverence or adoration for a deity. God Almighty is in this place today. You can feel him in this place when you walk through the doors. The music's playing and it just prompts you to want to praise him. But to get into the throne of glory and to worship him, to love him, to, to uh, sacrifice unto him. We find a story in John chapter 4. Four, verse 3, where Jesus made it a point to go through Galilee or Samaria, I'm sorry. The Bible says that he said he must need to go through Samaria. He made it a point to go through Samaria because time after time after time, the Jews rejected God. Their king, their Messiah that they looked for, that they heard about time after time after time through the Old Testament, that prophesied, the, the prophets that had prophesied to them look for, looking for that king, looking for somebody. And when Jesus came, they rejected him. They turned him away even though he was the one they were looking for, they didn't recognize him. Do you recognize who God is today? Do you know who you're praising today? Do you know who you worship today? So many times we worship our flesh and we're trying to please our flesh, trying to find that good feeling, trying to find something that will make us happy. There is no happiness like Jesus today. 
Yeah, they'll, they'll bring you up for a little bit, but it'll bottom you out. When you get that fix, that drug, you find that drug that makes you feel good for a little bit, it'll bring you crashing down. And what are you looking for? Another fix. It's not in the bottle. It's not in the cigarettes. It's not in this world. Look at the stars of Hollywood. They're committing suicide left and right. And by the world's standards, they have everything that they want. They've made it. They've got what they wanted. But they don't have what they need, which is God. They know of God. They all say they know God, or most of them. They give credit to God, but they don't know God. They give Him praise, but they don't worship Him. Jesus said he must go through Samaria because the Jews rejected him. So he went to Samaria, and there was a woman there at the well. Well, she wasn't at the well. He he went to the well and waited on her. He waited on her to come because she knew she would come. Just like he's waiting on you today. He's calling you. But will you hear his voice? Will you understand his voice? The Bible says, turn the backgrounds off. I can't do it from up here. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in the mountain nor yet in Jerusalem. Worship the Father. You worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. I just lost power. Go to the next scripture. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Next. The woman saith unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. But you don't understand, and he just told her everything in her life. But she didn't recognize who he was. She'd heard about him. He just sat there and told her everything that was going on in her life. You've been married four times, and the fifth one you're living with now is... He told her everything. She recognized it. The woman saith unto him, I know that that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all. Go to the next. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put my title up. (laughs) The Lonely God. I touched on this. I I wasn't going to do it a couple Sundays ago, but I felt God in our class. And I talked, started a little bit on the Lonely God, and I told told him then I wasn't going to do it because I didn't want to ruin my message. And I couldn't get away from the feeling this morning. As I was seeking God, the last three days, I think, Brother Lambert asked me Friday, 
or maybe Saturday morning, I can't remember. If I would preach and I started seeking God for his will, this service, asking God to lead me that I could speak to his people. Because I don't want to just get up here and say words, but I want to feed his sheep. I want to say what God wants me to say. And as I studied and, and looked and tried to find the mind of God, this is the only thing that I could keep coming to me. Lonely God. The lonely God. Robin Williams. Most of y'all know who Robin Williams is. One of the most famous comedians, I guess, movie stars you could call. But he committed suicide because he was lonely. Had everything. Everything the world had to offer. Family in his own house, but he felt lonely, they said. He killed himself because he was lonely, depressed. That spirit of loneliness is real. That spirit of depression is real. And the only thing that's going to overcome that is the spirit of God. That spirit of light. That spirit of darkness wants to control people and to smother them and to squeeze the life out of them. Even though the world, by the world's standards, he had it all. Money, fame, wealth, family, big nice house. But he was lonely. He didn't have God. He knew God. He knew of God. He worshiped God in his way, but he didn't worship God in God's way. He praised him. To know God today. To really know God today. There was a lady and her, or a, a preacher and her husband, her wife, that went to do God's work. And God had called them to preach. And they went to this town that God had called them to. And the lady was in her house, and that spirit of depression got on her. Because her husband was always busy about the church business, and she was always felt like she was home alone. She was in her house alone, and she just got to the point that she couldn't take it anymore. As the story goes, she, she told, she just started praying in her kitchen. She said, God, I'm, I'm lonely. I just need a friend to talk to, God. Just need somebody to talk to. I'm so alone. Even though her husband was there at night, even though they were doing what God had called them to do. And even though they were doing God's will and going in the right direction, she felt all alone. It doesn't matter where you're at in life. The devil's going to try to kill, steal, and destroy that's what the Word says. But when we're in our place of worship with God, when we're where we need to be, God can intervene. And as the story goes, she cried out to God, God, I, I need somebody to talk to. Send me a friend. Send somebody that I can talk to. I'm so alone, God. She just 
went on about her business. She was cooking and cleaning and washing clothes. And stories. as the story goes, the next day she was going on about her business and she heard the door open. And, and I, I can picture in my mind back in the older days, probably as old as I am, 50s, 60s, somewhere in there. There wasn't people everywhere. Old wooden floors. Older house. She said she could hear footsteps coming down the hallway. She turned around and looked. Didn't see nobody. Didn't see anything. But she could hear the footsteps coming. Next thing she seen the chair pull out by the table. She could hear somebody sit down in the chair. Then she heard a voice that said, I'm lonely too. Just looking for somebody to talk to. Is God looking for you today? Are you looking for God today? Are you just going through the motions and coming to church and worshiping Him and praising Him and lifting your hands and singing the songs because the music moves you? Are you looking for to worship Him? To give Him the glory and the honor that is due Him. To get into that place that is just you and God. So I was teaching my class on how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Our Father, just to talk to him like a childlike faith. Daddy, I love you. The greatest things... As a papaw, it's when my grandbabies run and want to hug me. That feeling when you come home from work and your children run and want to see your face because they long to be in your presence. I can just picture God longing for that presence of you, looking for you the great and mighty God that created heaven and earth. He spoke it into existence, the Bible says. He created man. He spoke life into him. But the one thing he didn't do, he gave you a conscience and he gave you a choice. He gave you your will to either serve flesh or to serve God Almighty. To listen to your voice or to listen to that still, small voice of God. To yield to the spirit that calleth unto men everywhere. Or to listen to that self flesh that wants to please me. And as the story went on, she just started talking to God, and God would talk back to her. He took away that lonely spirit. He replaced that depression and that lonely spirit. Because every day at the same time, she would long to hear that door open and then footsteps come down because she knew her friend was coming to see her. She wouldn't be lonely no more. Is God lonely today because you're too busy? Is God lonely today because you're too worried about the job? What you're going to eat? 
but just to go to him, our Father, which art in heaven. How are you today, God? How are you today? What's your will in my life, God? Not my will, but what's your will? What, what do you have for me to do today, God? I want to be pleasing to you. God. They asked him to teach me to pray, God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Not my kingdom. Thy will be done in earth, in this earthly vessel. Not on this earth, but in this earthly vessel. Have you given your vessel to God today? Are you keeping your vessel for you? Are you polluting your vessel with the things of the world? Are you filling your vessel with the things of God? But just to love him, to worship him. I'm just using pastor as a reference, as authority in my life. How are you today, God? Are we too busy? Most of the time we come to God with all our problems and all our needs and all our things that are happening to us, but we, we never ask God, how are you? What's your will for me in my life? Dad, I love you. I, I love you, God. I love you. I just want to give you a hug. A lonely God is crying out for his children. Are we about the master's business, but we're too busy? Come on, somebody. God's reaching for somebody in this place. Come on, Sister Lisa. Do we worship who we know not? Or do we know who Jesus really is? Is he the lover of your soul? Or is he just a name that you cry out to when you're in need? I want him to be more than just a God I need. I want him to be the God I love. The God that is proud of me. The God that I serve. The God that I reverence. We take for common the house of God. Most of us don't even reverence the house of God anymore because it's just become such a common place. But the place of God should never be common. It should always be set aside holy unto God. A place that we reverence him, that we worship him, that we bow down before him, that we put nothing else before him, but that we love him. Would you stand? Where's God at in your life? Are you going to heed to the words that Peter spoke on the day of Pentecost to save yourself? Maybe you just need to renew that relationship with God today in this place. I'm opening these altars up to you today to come. You don't have to leave this place the same way you came. You don't have to leave this place depressed and lonely. There's a God that's lonely too. He wants to talk to you. There's a God in this house today that's waiting on you to make that commitment. 
to surrender your life to him, to surrender, to surrender, to submit, to submit my will to God. Letting go of my will. God, what do you want me to do today? What is your will for me in my life today, God? Come on, somebody. Is God waiting on you to hug him, to love him? To seek his face. Just to let him know, hey, I love you. So glad to be in your presence today, God. I'm just so glad to be in your presence to feel that mercy and that grace that you bestow on me every day. It's going to be a terrible thing to be lost in this end time. To miss out with God. Having a chance, but not using it. He said, many are going to come to me and say, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in thy name? Have I not done many mighty works in thy name? What's that in our terms? Well, ha, didn't I go to church? Didn't, didn't I pay in the offering? Didn't I, I sing in a choir? Didn't, didn't I do this? But he said, I don't know you. I don't know you. You say you know me, but I don't know you. I guess it was about a year ago. I believe it was in over in Texas, around Dallas area, I believe, that somebody had tapped into the system of the city there, and every alarm, every alarm in that city went off at the same time. No clouds in the sky, no rain, no storm, no tornadoes. Nobody knew why they all went off. But it stirred hearts of people. 
because these alarms were screaming and nobody knew how to turn them off. You listen to me. There should be an alarm going off in every soul in this place today. Every person in this building is going to stand before God. And every person is going to give account of their life, the good and the bad. And I believe God has been trying to reach throughout this whole service. There are people in this building that know they're not where they need to be in God. But it doesn't bother you. The enemies talk so long to you that, that you feel like that God is just going to overlook everything. And just because you come to church, everything's going to be great. But I'm going to tell you, just coming to church is not enough. Just being here today is not enough. Just the woman being there that day at the well was not enough. She had to ask for that living water. He said, if you would have asked of me, I would have given you this living water. Are you going to sit in here today Say, well, Lord, I'm just not ready to drink right now. I, I'm, not, I'm not ready to make that commitment. I'm not ready, I'm not ready to sell out. I know, I know you're coming back. I know things are happening. I know, but I'm just not ready right now. But when the alarms go off, and one writer said, I saw the stars from heaven fall. Was he seeing stars or was he seeing bombs? Because if one star fell from the earth, you couldn't even see this earth because the stars are, are a million times bigger than what the earth is. But there was something falling from the sky that looked like a fallen star. Have you ever heard of so much talk about nuclear war, nuclear war, Russia, Russia this, Iran this, North Korea this. Oh, I'm going to tell you what, listen, I, I believe God's trying to wake somebody up in this place today. He's been sitting here waiting for you to come today. He's been sitting in this service today waiting for you. And when you get up and walk out these doors today, have you, have you come to sit on the well? I want you to close your eyes right now. Service is going to end in a minute. Your day is going to go on. You're going to go eat at your restaurants or you're going to go eat at home or you're going to go do whatever you want and get ready for tomorrow. But I'm going to ask you, if you were driving home today and you was listening to K-Love or whatever station you listen to and it erupts and says North Korea has just launched a nuclear device. And you have... 28 minutes before impact. What are you going to do? Can you get a hold of God in 28 minutes? I wouldn't leave this building today. I wouldn't walk out them doors today. There are people in this building that's got the Holy Ghost, but you're fading away. God's not number one. 
He's a part-time God to you. You're a part-time person, part-time Christian. Going to be lost. Going to be lost. Church, I want you to pray right now. Brother Ivy said these altars were open. And listen, I wouldn't worry who saw me, what anybody thought. I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care. Listen, it is stupid to care what anybody would think. I wouldn't leave. I would make my way to this altar today. I would tell God, I am sorry. I am sorry, Lord, for the things in my life. I'm sorry for running. I'm sorry for hiding from you. I'm sorry for being selfish. I'm sorry for allowing things to stop me from getting a hold of you, God. I need you to touch me. I need to get a hold of you today. I want, I want that real thing. I'm telling you right now. I'm asking right now in this service. As God pulls one more time. As God's pulling one more time. I'm asking. I'm pleading with you. I'm begging you. Listen. Don't, don't let your flesh talk you out of this moment. Don't let, the, don't let your flesh de deny you of this moment. My Lord, I would just jump up. I would, I would just shake myself and just jump up. And, and I would come down here and, I, and I'd let God know. Listen. God I need you God I need you to break some junk out of my life I need you to touch me I need you to change me Lord I want to be ready I don't want to be lost I don't want my family to be lost I don't want my loved ones to be lost I'm asking right now if you would come don't wait too late don't wait too late. He's been waiting. He's calling you. He's calling you right now. Come on. Come on. My Lord, you can't laugh this thing off. You can't laugh it off. Come on. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's reaching. Would you come? Service is going to be over in a minute. You're going to miss an opportunity. You're going to miss an opportunity. You might not have another one. There might not, not be another call. There might not be another tug. There might not be another pull. There not, might, it might not be another stir. It might not be. He's calling you today. He's reaching for you today. Don't wait on somebody else to move. Don't wait on somebody else. I knew a lady that said, she wasn't going to move until her husband moved. I'm not going to pray till my husband prays. I'm not going to get a hold of God till he does. Well, he died not ever getting a hold of God. And she died not getting a hold of God. And she was waiting on for him to make the move. There's people's lives could change today if you just make a move. I didn't know if my wife would leave me or not when I, when I made my mind up to serve God. I didn't know what she was going to do, but all I knew, I got to get a hold of God. And by me getting a hold of God... My wife got a hold of God, and my children got a hold of God, and my grandkids got a hold of God. And if the, and if the bombs do fall, and the world does, and, and things do happen, they got God is going to take them out of this world, and they got hope. Jesus, in your mighty name today. 
Daddy, where are we going, Daddy? I don't know. Daddy, Daddy, I want to go to church, Daddy. Daddy, I, I want to go to church. Daddy, I, I don't want the world, Daddy. Daddy, I, 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 don't, I don't want the things the world's trying to give me, Daddy. Daddy, take me to church, Daddy. Daddy, I want to be saved, Daddy. Daddy, Daddy, don't lead me the wrong way, Daddy. Daddy, I need you, Daddy, to stand up, Daddy, and take me. Show me what to do, Daddy. I want to be saved, Daddy. Husband, husband. I'm following you. Husband. I'm following you. Don't lead me wrong. Don't lead me wrong. Come on. Come on, there's some men that need to stand up and be some men today. There's some men that need to stand up and become men of God and walk in God's path and lead your family and lead your home and lead your wife and lead your children. Don't lead them to hell. Don't lead them to hell. Don't lead them to hell. Come on. He said, well, Brother Lambert, I didn't come for this. Well, but God's been waiting for you a long time. And he's been reaching for you a long time. And he's set for a long time. But he wants you to drink today. Jesus, in your mighty name. Oh, Lord Jesus. He's calling you today. He's calling. He was calling earlier in the tongues. He was calling. He was reaching. He was touching your heart. He's waiting for a response from you. Oh, Jesus. The old song said, where, where will you be a thousand years from now? Will you be happy? A thousand years from now, where will you be? A hundred years from now, where will you be? Five years from now, where will you be? Jesus, in your mighty name today, we're going to ask, fixing to move on, but if you want to pray, if you want to pray, we're here for you. If you want to pray, we got time to pray. It ain't over yet. But in a little while, service is going to be over. Don't take a chance with your soul. Don't take a chance with your soul. Jesus, in your mighty name, Lord. Hallelujah. Just all lift our hands to the Lord. Hallelujah, my God. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I remember being in Lepanto, Arkansas, doing revival. It was a year that 27, I think, 28 tornadoes came through that day. Not knowing what county I was in, all I knew was in Lepanto. And the radio kept 
breaking in and and they had the people telling this county and this county and this county and and tornadoes and winds and and then you could tell that it was coming our way and I kept listening and I kept listening and 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 for you know what I kept listening but I didn't do anything I kept listening and we were in a travel trailer and my kids and my wife and and the winds and I went outside and I looked up and, and there, there were green clouds. They were rolling and 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 it just I thought, my Lord, I've heard and I heard and I heard and I heard. It was coming, it was coming, it was coming, but I didn't do nothing about it. And now it's here and I, I don't know what to do and I don't know where to go. Where are we gonna hide? An awful feeling. And some of you are heard and heard and heard and heard and heard. What are you going to do? Don't wait too late. Let's all stand and you may return to your seats today. I don't want to be lost lost and you don't either God wants you to turn around God wants you to turn around hallelujah I remember driving down the road and my wife says, are you lost? I said, oh, no, I'm not lost. I had no idea where I was, but I wasn't lost. I wasn't going to admit to her that I was lost. She says, where we, you know where we at? I said, no, I don't know where we at, but I know it's the road goes somewhere. But the hardest thing to do was to turn around and that my and the eyes of my wife see that I wasn't going the right way. It was tough. My kids in the back seat looking. <laughs> it's hard for a man to say I, I've been going the wrong way. It is. I've been going the wrong way. Sure, that road goes somewhere, but you know, do I really want to find out where that road goes or do I want to get back on the right way? Praise the Lord. But thank God that I did turn around. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can run out of gas on the wrong road. Praise God. Appreciate everybody today. We're going to pray over our books. <clears throat> Well, the doctors talked to them. They said, well, uh, Randy's lung is not getting better, and if it doesn't, then do we want to let him go on? No, I don't want to let him go on. I don't want to let him go. He's 58 years old. I tell him, listen, I said, you're my only hope, Randy. I said... If you die, I become the ugliest person in the world. <laughs> and he laughs. I said, listen, as long as you're alive, I still have hope. And I cut up with him, but I said, Randy, I said, I, what they're saying is not good. I said, what do you want me to do? And I saw a little boy's eyes come out of me. And he said, I said, listen, I said, if you take the trach, put a trach in you and a feeding tube, I said, you'll not get to eat no more. You'll not get to drink anything no more. And you won't get to talk no more. I said, what do you want to do, Randy? He said, I want the trach. I want to live. I want to live. 
I said, I'll do whatever it takes. I will do whatever. But I'm believing God to touch that lung. I'm believing God to touch that lung. I'm believing God to, for a miracle for him. Hallelujah. Because I know one thing. When doctors get to the point they don't know what to do, I know a God that knows what to do. I know a God. Hallelujah. I ain't giving up on him. And I'm not giving up on these people either. I'm not giving up on them. The world might have wrote them off. The world might have told them no more. Hallelujah. But you know what? I believe God can touch every name in these books. I believe God can touch every situation. I believe God can heal. I believe God can save. I believe God can deliver. I believe God can restore. I believe God can make the way where there seems no way. I believe God is life. I believe God is salvation. Hallelujah. He's a chain breaker. He's a life giver. I believe God can forgive and forget. As we all stand today, we're going to pray over these books and, and we're going to pray for Sister Rob and going to pray for, for the Chisholm, uh, uh, Esme and them are sick and Shasta and them are sick and there's, it seems like that old spirit of sickness trying to come back around. We're going to pray for them right now. We're going to pray. I want you to grab somebody's hand because there's power in agreeing together. The Bible said we're two or three agree, agree. We're going to believe, we're going to believe, we're going to believe there's going to be a change, we're going to touch these lives. My God, we come before your throne. Lord, rebuke and bind every spirit of the enemy. Rebuke and bind every lie of the enemy. Rebuke and bind the mouth of the enemy, my Lord. And God, we loosen your hand of miracles. We loosen your hands, Lord, to do a work, my God. Lord, touch all them that are sick, God. My Lord, move upon them, God. We speak healing, Lord. My God, we ask the healing of these in the books, God. These that are hurting, these that are suffering, God. These that are lonely, these that are broken, these that are lost. My God, to move in their life. Draw them, deliver them, God. Lord, we lay these books on these altars to be draw. Draw them, God. Set them free, Lord. Oh, God, in your mighty name, in your mighty name, in your mighty name, in your mighty name, Lord. Lord, hallelujah, glory to God, thank you Jesus, praise the Lord, hallelujah, ushers if you come today, I want us to remember Wednesday night service, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jacob and Chris and Robert's going to be preaching, Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they're not the three blind mice. See how they run. But they're going to get a hold of God and they're going to come in and they're going to minister. Praise the Lord. He's not Mr. Bubbles Wednesday. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's a chain breaker Wednesday. Praise God. He's a devil chaser Wednesday. Hallelujah. Jacob, hallelujah. It's not the air conditioner, man. He's not going to fill us up with gas. I'm not even going there. Glory. Praise God. He's going to help us. He's going to get some cool air instead of hot air. Praise God. If you're hot... And you go into a devil's hell, he can get you in tune to the cooler, the one that cools. Praise God. And Robert, uh, he's the alarm man. He's going he's gonna to set off some alarms and tests to make sure you can escape. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We had a grandbaby that done a great thing yesterday. We have a low alarm on mama's house and who would think that she would go down that hall and push that button but she brought visitors to our house <laughs> hallelujah 
she brought visitors. There was a whole red truck of them with alarms and ladders and coming to partake of our alarms. <laughs> Praise God. Appreciate the visitors. Don't be a visitor. Don't be a visitor. Don't be a visitor. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what I told them, people, when I went to that church I went to? I said, I, said, I told God I wouldn't leave in here without the Holy Ghost. I made my mind, I don't care if they lock the doors, I'm in here for it, get the Holy Ghost. And I got it, and they didn't have to lock the door. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Any announcements before we take the offering up? Praise God. Mm. All right. Jesse, we're praying for you right now. Lord, move upon him right now. Lord, whatever is hurt, whatever is broken, whatever is bruised, my Lord, the touching Lord, I'm asking to pour out the Holy Ghost upon him, Lord. My God, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, we send the word that it come back not void in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I guess there's no announcements. Praise God, huh? Friday night youth prayer. Friday night youth prayer. Praise God. Hallelujah. You say, well, we don't have a lot of youth. Well, use what you got to get more. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody asked Brother Holmes, how are you going to fill this big church? He said, God said, fill the prayer room. He'll fill the church. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, guess what? They filled the prayer room and God filled the church. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask today to bless this offering and bless this tithes and bless this church. God, we are here for you, Lord, and we're ready to serve you in whatever manner you would have us to be. And Lord, we ask your blessings in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Be sure to say prayers for those that down in Texas, uh, a lot of them lost everything they have, but they still have their souls. You can replace a lot of things, but you can't replace life. Praise God. Bring your tithes offer and after it be dismissed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wait, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're not quite through. I almost let it slip. Isn't their anniversary today, this week? Brother and Sister Roberts, Friday. Been married 643 years. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, I've been married 17 years. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. Let's sing to them. We'll let them stay right there, but we'll, let's do it. Hallelujah. You don't know it, huh? Hallelujah. Praise God. First three to you, oh, happy anniversary to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. Oh, happy anniversary to you. Oh, happy anniversary to you. And the best years you ever had. <coughs> My pastor used to sing, and when the battle's over, we should wear a crown. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bring your offering tithes. Dismissed in Jesus' name. Love you. See you Wednesday night. We got three mighty men of God that's going to bring the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you. Glory.